Hey guys, welcome back to the fossil preparation blog. I thought today I would explain what the orange bucket is all about. Uh, just a couple minutes ago, I emptied out the vacuum to clean it out because we were having some problems with it uh, last time. Turns out that none of the particulate matter generated from the sandblasting machine or the rocks themselves are actually ending up in the vacuum, which is exactly what we want. That is the point of the bucket because if all that particular matter was going through the machine of this, it'll tear the inside of it up like crazy fast and ruin it pretty quickly and unfortunately this vacuum has been used for that kind of purpose so that's why we're having troubles with it but the water is catching all of the stuff as you can see down in here all this guck that is the sandblasting material plus what's being torn away by the rock itself so the way it works is we're in the machine here we're sandblasting 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 there is an airflow that comes through here down the tube and in i marked it with in in right here so this long tube what it does is it shoots all of the the dirty air i'm going to call it down and hits the water the water then mixes with the dirty air pulls all of the dirt dust and whatever material is left out of the out of the air and makes it land in the bottom of the bucket here then the clean air then goes up this part here this is an l 90 degree l then travels up through the tube and then connects to the vacuum as you can see all of that dark stuff in there is what is being cleaned out using this water filtration method. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult. I just uh, drilled some holes through here. I used the Dremel tool just to cut out uh, the piping, the holes for the piping. And then we have some screw-on attachments for a bottom and a top here. And then we just put in a piece of PVC pipe. Did the same thing for the top and the bottom here and then fit, just fixed it now. I don't think the sizing matters so much just so long as you can get the, the airflow to work. So I think we're using one inch pipes, but yeah, it seems to work really, really good. Right now you may notice these little black dots I've put in here. Those are a Sharpie marker and I marked where the one inch line is from the bottom of the bucket. So you only want one inch of water down there on the bottom. Then you want about half an inch or three quarters of an inch uh, space between that long pipe and the surface of the water so it can shoot all of the particular matter into the water and then thus filtering it. You do not want the elbow piece anywhere close to the water because if you do that, you're gonna get water sucked up and into your vacuum. And if your vacuum is not set up for water, you're gonna ruin your vacuum. So that's how it works. All right, here's a profile diagram of the bucket. Uh, so that way you can get a better idea of what it looks like as far as the schematic goes. Now you may be asking, Zach, did you invent this? And no, I did not. I got it from the Garage Gazette, and it was user Goodfellow who posted this. And I'm going to post a link for this in the description of the video. Now, thank you so much once again for watching, and see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.